Hello YouTube Pipers and my two booktube enthusiasts. This is Double O Pipe, aka Rick. Back again trying to keep a pipe lit. My London Coronation Pipe, made by Simon. This rubber bit I put on there, I've already bitten through it. That's a tight clinch, I guess. Sunday afternoon. Pretty soon be time to feed Hunter. We had a dark cloud go over a few minutes ago with some thunder in it, which terrified him. But it's gone now. Must have rained a little because the grass out there looks a little wet. Quite the cloud. Inside my pipe, I have Carter Hall. Which I like very much. I think I like Velvet better, but <clears throat> I do like Carter Hall. I better like it because I bought a lot of it. I got a lot of it back there. <clears throat> I don't think I'll smoke it in my lifetime, to be honest with you. Hmm. I've been thinking about my dad lately. Last time I talked to you, I think, <clears throat> I think I talked to you about his job at <clears throat> White Stack. That was the tugboat. Tugbo tugboat company on Charleston Harbor. Didn't suit him. But it was his first job. <clears throat> Next job he got was with Armor Star, I told you. <clears throat> that was a meat packing plant here in Charleston. I'm not sure of the street, I should have looked that up. But on one it was a side street and on one side was Armor Star and on the other side was Swift Company. Swift was another meat packing plant. Company, and they were both there side by side, more or less. <clears throat> this side street, you'd walk, I, don't know, I guess that would be west, walk west, and you'd hit King Street, which was the main drag of Charleston. <clears throat> and I think Edwards Five and Dime was on the corner. anyway, Dad worked there, and <clears throat> at first, on occasion, he would work nights, and his job then would be to mind the ovens while the meat products were cooking. The main thing they had there were frankfurters and excuse me, frankfurters and bologna, or bologna. Mom would often fix him something for lunch since he was working at night and no place was open. <clears throat> and she'd drive it into town 
and I'd go with her, naturally. She'd hand me my coat, and I'd grab the bag of sandwiches that she had made, and put my coat on and run out to the car. Jezebel, <clears throat> mom would crank her up and head on out to town. She'd park pretty close to the front of the <clears throat> of the meat packing company. And I'd jump out of the car and run up the steps and she'd close the door, lock the car, and follow me up. <clears throat> and I'd reach as high as I could and ring the bell. And Dad would come and open the door. He was normally the only person there at night whenever he was doing this. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. That frog's back. And he would open the door and we'd walk in. And the office was over to the right and we'd walk kind of an alleyway into the open area where he was working. <clears throat> and there were vats over to the left that they would mix the meat product in, scraps and such they would mix in. The scraps they mixed for the bologna was a little, of a little higher quality than the ones they used for the frankfurters. Because my dad would never eat a frankfurter. But the bologna was a different story. He would he would eat that. I asked him once why he wouldn't eat a, a hot dog. And he said, because I know what they put in it. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I guess, says something. Anyway, the floor was brick. And it slanted down into a kind of a drain. So that whenever things slopped over onto the floor, they could sweep it down into the drain and spray it out. Now, Dad would... <clears throat> there must have been a machine that they used to... First, they would get a sheath, which was made out of a mesh, and they would squirt this meat mixture with spices and all that kind of thing into this mesh, like hose, closed at the bottom. They would fill it up like you would a, one of those long balloons, except instead of air, it would be this meat product they were pouring into to be pushed in. Close up the top and hang it on a bar that was across this trolley. They would put the entire trolley into an oven because they'd have, I don't know, five, probably five across and five, five on each bar and five bars. <clears throat> Then he'd roll it over to the oven. The oven had big doors, and you just roll the whole trolley into the oven and close the doors and set the temperature and the timer. <clears throat> At this particular time, whenever we were there bringing the sandwiches, he had a break because... I think there were two ovens, if I remember correctly. And both of them had a trolley in with 25 bolognas. We called it bologna. I'm sure everybody else does. Bologna is what it's supposed to be. I'll spelled bologna. But since it's Italian, it's bologna. bologna. At any rate, 25 on each rack. 
and these were in there. They, they, the time wasn't up yet, so we would find some place to sit and break out the sandwiches. Sit and eat, and I would think about when <clears throat> Mom would drop me off in the daytime to visit Dad. And there were over two catty corner from where we would sit. There were huge doors, like almost like a safe in a bank. Open them up and walk into a refrigerated area. And the, there were several women who sat in here and they would put, I don't know how many frankfurters you put in a package, I guess eight. <clears throat> Isn't it eight? eight frankfurters to a package and six six buns, or is it 10 frankfurters to a package and eight buns? Because I know that they were never the same. <laughs> You'd have to buy more bun packages. <laughs> so anyway, they would put them together, wrap them up in cellophane, and there was an iron they would bring down to heat seal, and then they would push it over. And I would always go in there because they, they seemed to like me and <clears throat> kept me out of Dad's hair for a little bit. But they would always fuss over me and say, boy, aren't you handsome just like your daddy and stuff like that. And then they'd say, you want, us, you want to seal a package of weenies because that's, that's what we call them. And of course I'd say yes. So they'd get together and have me fold the cellophane over. There was a cardboard in there. Fold the cellophane, push it under the iron, and I would do the lever and seal it. And they'd tell me what a good job I did and all that. And back then, they used to put these plastic discs into the package of Frankfurters. And on the discs, there would be pictures of baseball players and some information on them. And they would always ask me if I wanted the latest one, and I'd always say yes, and they'd give me three or four of them. I'd put them in my pocket. Then I'd wander around, see what else everybody else was doing, talk to all the girls. And then Dad would always come in there, open it up, and say, where is he? And they'd say, he's over here, and then they'd, flirt with dad because they like to see my dad blush because <laughs> anytime they would flirt with him he'd, he'd get all red so anyway he would take me out of there but that's what I'd be thinking about whenever I was eating my sandwich whenever we finished it the buzzer would normally go off over there at the ovens And Dad would have another couple of rollers with hanging hanging bologna, <clears throat> undone hanging bologna, so that when he took the ones that were done out, he could push another trolley in. Now sometimes when the bologna was cooking, there'd be a weakness in a mesh, not very many of it, of it, of them had this happen, but when it did, it was always great for me because I loved that. But the mesh, there might be a weakness in it, and the bologna would expand and burst through, so that it made a product they could not sell. So we could take that one home with us, which we normally did. But anyway, when Dad would take it out and put the new one in, he'd look them inspect them to see if there was anything like that and if he found one he would take it off and cut slices off of it and I can tell you that is the best bologna I've ever eaten fresh out of the oven first cooked fresh out of the oven sliced right then might have been a little on the warm side, but still, it was tasty. And I hadn't tasted that same 
flavor until I got a microwave oven and put bologna slices into the microwave. And that reminded me of exactly what it tasted like when Dad would cut that slice off of that burst bologna sheath. Good stuff. Anyway, we would stack that up and get it ready to take home, and Dad would pull the other tray out and put another trolley in, close it up, fix the timer and the temperature, <clears throat> and then get ready to take us out to the car. Now, when I had a chance, I, I used to wander around and of course, there were cockroaches everywhere because all that scrap food, all that scrap meat that was down there at the drain, they would always be over there. So I'd run over and try to stomp them with my feet. Normally, I'd slip and slide and crash down on my bottom. And my dad would tell me to get up off that nasty floor. <laughs> but, you know, kids, they want to kill those cockroaches. I hated cockroaches. They tried to keep it clean in there and keep that at a minimum, but um, still, not everything went down the drain. You know, portions got caught up on the drain and in the mortar and the brick and such. But I remember those slanting floors down to the drain with red brick it was a pretty floor. I mean, it was always shiny because it was always that that meat would always leave a trail of <clears throat> fat. So it was always slippery and but it looked pretty. Red brick. You don't see brick work like that anymore. I mean, it, the brick wasn't the kind that's on the wall here. It was kind of rounded on the edges. I don't know how to explain it, but a little different. Could be from all the wear and tear on it, cleaning it up and all that. But I always enjoyed those trips to Armor Star at night where we could watch him cooking the bologna <clears throat> and hope for a, a burst skein. That was some good stuff. Fresh out of the oven. If you ever want to see what it tastes like, the closest I've ever found, like I say, is microwave. Put it in the microwave for a few seconds, 10 or 15 and it, and it almost has the same flavor as it did back then. <clears throat> yeah, I enjoyed those. Anyway, Dad would always walk us out to the car, and as we were getting in, I'd see him. He'd pull the package of Luckies out of his pocket. Just flip it like that, one would come out. He was left-handed. And he'd put it in his mouth, it would dangle. He'd put the packet back, get the lighter out of his pocket, and put the flame to it, and suck in the smoke. And he always put it, well, he was left-handed. He put it between his thumb and his forefinger and always held the lit end in his palm like that. And I always wondered if that was due to the war. Because, you know, they said <clears throat> three on a match get you killed. So hiding that burning ember at the end, I was, I'm sure that had to do something. Because right? you see a lot of the people in movies back in those days after the war, they hold their cigarettes like that too. So it must have something to do with the war. Anyway, I 
Mom would crank the car up, back up, and start to take off, and I'd be waving, and he'd, he'd wave, pull that cigarette out of his mouth, and stream smoke out of his nose. And he'd watch us go and puff maybe once or twice more, and then just drop it and mash it with his foot, and then walk back in. Yeah, he smoked Luckies. And back then, they were unfiltered. <clears throat> and I've I've had Luckies since then. They don't, you can't find them. They're hard to find now. But my son found some, and they, they do have a better taste than any of the others. I mean, cigarettes aren't great, but... Isn't the tobacco they used in Lucky back in the day the same that they used in Half and Half? I'm not sure. It seems like something sparks a memory of that being true. Because Lucky, to Lucky Strike tobacco did taste better than others. But anyway, I meander in my mind. Forgive me. So much for Armor Star and Company across the street from Swift and Company. Down the street from Edwards Five and Dime, which catty corner across was the little cafe that Dad used to take us to whenever we went in the daytime. I still remember those days. I was just a little guy. And it meant a lot to go where he worked and to be around dad when he was doing his job. Mom used to drop me off for lunch on occasion too. <clears throat> and when she did that, <laughs> he didn't have a sandwich that he wanted. He just, he had, I think a Coke and, and a package of um, Marita cinnamon buns. Those were the ones that had that icing, that white icing on top break it open. I think there were like six of them in a package and he'd break them up and give me one and break one up. And that's what we'd have for lunch when her mom dropped me off to eat with him. <laughs> the only time he had something different is whenever he took us to that cafe. He didn't care what he ate. He said all he needed to do was fill his stomach up because it hurt if he didn't have anything. <laughs> A lot of times he just drank water to fill his stomach up. Anyway, so much for my reminiscing, so much for my childhood, so much for Armor Star and Bologna and cooking it in the microwave. Remember that. Take care of yourselves. Hope your weekend was a good one. I hope tomorrow, Monday, is a good one too. Take care of yourselves. God bless you. Until the next time. Bye-bye.